I'm not going to lie, this news is massive. I've literally just got off a call with Ramus of Everlook, who got a survey about Cataclysm. Now, even if you're not interested in Cataclysm, or you think it's going to be something that you're not going to stick around for, by the end of this video, you might change your mind. I'll include bits of the Discord conversation throughout this, because the pictures that I put on screen are going to be all in German, and unless you speak German, you're not going to understand it. I don't know how many other people have got this survey, and whilst no, you're not meant to share it, we're naughty boys. But some of these features are going to be absolutely crazy, and there's many bits in this survey that we're just going to gloss over, so the whole thing won't be included. But some of the things I want to touch on, which are features that aren't necessarily in Cata, but that they're working on or planning on introducing, are things like account-wide mounts and pets, solo shuffle for arenas, world events for more content to do outside of raids, scaling all of the raids up to your level, so you could go and do Blackwing Lair and get DFT and it'd be level 85 and appropriate, which is mental. Changes to progression and leveling quest experience, all of that side of things, even being able to fly from 1 to 80. Ordinarily, you wouldn't have been able to fly around until level 60 when you can get your Flight Master's license, but actually being able to get flying at, let's say, level 20 and being able to fly around all of the zones whilst leveling that's actually a really good change. There's so much more like improved Heroic Plus, ways to actually find groups, and even Mythic Plus has been mentioned. So let's just jump straight in. The main thing is this slide here, which was slide 16, where we're looking at all of the features in Cataclysm, and some of which weren't necessarily introduced back in the day. These could be features from further down the line retail expansions that they think would fit in Cata, and are trying to get our take on whether we think that that would be a good fit or a bad fit. So just breaking down the list, 10 new dungeons, there's no change there. That is just the standard Cataclysm dungeons that will come with the future expansion. Two new races being Worgen and Goblin, which we absolutely already know about. Five new raids. And then we get to this one, which would be the first change. So account-wide mounts and pets. Account-wide uh, mounts and, and pets. Uh, then we have archaeology. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's interesting. Yeah. What? Account wide mounts and pets? That weren't in Cata. Yeah. Now, a lot of people think account wide mounts and pets came in in Cataclysm when it actually didn't. It wasn't actually added until Mr. Pandaria, but it would be a really, really good change in Cataclysm to be able to have access to your mounts, especially when you're going to be able to potentially, which we'll get to in a, a little bit, be able to fly from 1 to 60. So it would be like super useful for your ults to have access to all of your mains mounts, obviously. Archaeology, we already know about. Then there was a mention of solo queuing for arenas. I don't claim to be a particularly big Dragonflight player. Well, not a Dragonflight player at all. I believe this feature is in currently. Another possible change is the removal of 5v5 in arenas, which I'm not sure how well that would go down with people who enjoy doing 5v5 content. Changes to professions where it gets rid of specializations such as goblin or gnomish engineering, your tailoring specializations, your level working specializations, all of the things that really nowadays have slowly got to a point where they don't matter as much anymore anyway. Don't get me wrong, for engineering, you know, it still matters to be able to use sappers, for example. But actually, when you get into cataclysm, specializations matter a hell of a lot less to the point where they pretty much don't matter at all class changes we don't need to talk about but we are going to touch on talent changes soon which is uh, quite a juicy one the ui for collectibles which would very much mimic how it looks in retail i would imagine where you actually have like a toys tab where they all go that would be a, a great addition even a great addition now in raf so the fact that they're thinking about it for cataclysm is a good thing and then quite a big one is the improvement to dungeon browser so providing reliable methods to find groups for heroic plus and mythic plus mythic plus eh we're going to get into that more because they do go into a lot more detail about that system and how it would work and yes it's called mythic plus or they're sort of talking about it in terms of mythic plus but i would say it's actually more like gold challenge modes which i've spoke about so many times on the channel the addition of the dungeon journal which yes we know what the dungeon journal is and actually it's a very very good tool if you're not familiar with what it is it's this tool here where you can actually have a look at what loot drops you can look at the boss abilities you can look at you know what abilities are deadly what you need to look out for the damage dealer alert so things that you, that you need to pay attention to for like for your specific role and obviously this at the moment would only be for cataclysm dungeons and raids but i could really see them branching out and doing it for all content on the basis that all raids in cataclysm 
could be relevant again there's mention here of the heroic plus system so that would still be in the game so the titan dungeons or titan rune dungeons whatever you want to call them that we do now with actually variations of those dungeons built up in difficulty for example mythic plus again is mentioned here and it gives certain rewards that builds up on the titan rune dungeon uh, as it is now like mythic plus that's in brackets okay and uh... the chance to get new rewards like cosmetics, new color sets, etc. But it's not going to be gear, which again, we'll get into. So a better leveling system with reworking 1 to 60 to allow for flying actually and improve 60 to 80 to reduce the grinding and how long it takes to actually get into the current content. What that's going to look like isn't particularly clear even when we get later on into the slides but it feels like they don't want the 60 to 80 to take anywhere near as long as it does even sort of with all the xp nerfs and everything that come throughout the patches in cataclysm i feel like they're going to do something very different another interesting one which would be a new addition is live events so invasions like the aq events scourge invasions the elemental invasions deathwing related events just live events that make the world feel alive. Other things that we already know about are the addition of things like AoE looting, improved flight paths, in-game weak auras, but they're not weak auras, it's just those in-game alerts that if you watch my other cat video that I put out a couple of weeks ago, I actually show you what they look like when you get a proc and stuff like that. So it's just a way to make it really clear when you get an ability that procs that you need to use they also mentioned the fact that you don't need ammo in your bags as a hunter for example changes to the progression and leveling quest experience so i'm pretty sure this is referring more to the fact that it's a very much more linear experience in terms of questing where you go to a zone you get a few quests you go and do those quests you go back and hand in and it's very much like raf sort of leveling experience rather than actually the original vanilla leveling experience they mentioned the looking for raid tool but we won't talk about that rated battlegrounds are added as well which we know about reforging would be added in the pre-patch again which we know about repeatable content in the open world like rare bosses invasions world events this is an interesting one and world events i feel like in the past in well have actually gone down pretty well and on the most part do add like a bit of fun content to go and do even if it's to get a little bit of gold or there's certain currency that you can get from certain world events i think seeing world events in cataclysm it's not something i've ever thought about before but that would be a really good move just because of the ability to fly all around azeroth you know eastern kingdoms kalimdor and then you're going to have these world events popping up all over the place where you can go and do you know maybe you're encouraged to do a couple of them a day or whatever whether it is for a currency or it's for gold or some of them give honor some of them give justice points like whatever yeah, I think that's a really good idea and the perfect setting for it, purely because of how big the zones are. Talent changes, which we're going to get into because actually they allude to something pretty cool in this section. The addition of Tolbarad, the addition of Transmog, the unified loot across 10 and 25 man, which again, that's perfectly normal. We know you can only get loot from 10 or 25, but they do drop the same loot. But this is the big one rework of old raids so they're still challenging to your level when you're 85 so, so literally every raid could be relevant you could go and do zol well, not zol because that's gonna be a five man heroic that was a bad example you could go do aq you could go and do nax you could go and do alduar you can go and do all of these dungeons and they're all going to be scaled up to be relevant i mean that's mental like i mean good luck making bis lists you know because there will be weird things that we find but there'll be items that have got procs on that are going to be useful now like that adds so much i mean that sounds like a lot of work like blizzard's end which makes me think that they've probably been working on this for a, for quite a while and, and they've been thinking about doing this for quite a while but that's mega and the fact that you can only do 10 or 25 man of a specific raid means you can go and do 25 man in all current content and then if you're bored get a 10 man together let's go do molten core let's go do you know whatever if they're actually all tuned for 10 and 25 man as well and drop level 85 gear that is bonkers so that's something that i am really excited to see how that plays out and i mean if there was any closed alpha test in blizzard and you're watching this get me involved and then they basically have you go through some of these changes and they group them together and you have to pick which one you would like and which one you wouldn't like and then you go for a few slides hey, maybe you see the recognize the feature names you just get like always four feature names and then you have on the left hand side you would 
must mark one to say that's like most interesting of the four and on the right hand side that is least interesting of the of those four mentioned so now the new stuff whilst there's not tons of details on any of it we can pretty much pick it apart and work out roughly what it all means so improved dungeon browser firstly the heroic dungeons will be based on the titan rune dungeons and they'd give rewards based on what titan rune you're activating the dungeon with but then when you get to the certain difficulty the loot will not scale so you can only ever get this type of loot but you can unlock higher difficulties which will provide greater challenges and more options but play no part of the gearing progression so this means there will be content that you can do that's difficult and unlocks other options for more difficult content but it gives you no items in uh, as a reward you might get a title you might get a tabard you might get a mount like whatever you know i'm sure there will be things added that you you get but cosmetics i mean it sounds like gold challenge modes don't it and, it, and that's perfect this is what i've been saying all along adding content that doesn't need like not all content needs to give player power doesn't like you can have fun and do challenging content with no gear reward it can be purely for something cosmetic or purely for black bragging rights just to say i've done this i mean that's amazing they mention again about the introduction of invasions and world events to go and do so basically world events if you've ever done world events in retail or in past retail expansions around the same sort of vein so the events is to be able to relive events in warcraft history so they'll rework things like the aq gate opening events Deathwing events, the elemental and scourge invasions, all of those things that have happened that, that have been and gone, and they were really good. You know, everyone remembers running around doing all the scourge invasions when it was, you know, during the the uh, pre patch, you know, before the expansion. And once you, once that's gone, uh, there's no way of ever doing it again. So now it looks like they might be bringing some of these iconic things back and making them relevant maybe throughout the entire expansion is what i would hope that's not to say that we want to see the invasions going on 24 hours a day but if it was like on a weekly cycle where each week it's a different type of event that's going on that'd be absolutely insane they also go on to talk more about the arena solo queue also the improved loot from old raids they even give a specific example of dft at level 85 which gives the incentive to go and do old raids it's more content to consume and they even say that you could just go and do it for fun so i, I just you can tell how excited i am about that they also talk about improvements to the leveling system so the fact that yes 1 to 60 would be reworked with the ability to fly possibly remember this is just a survey this doesn't mean this is what the game's going to look like but it gives you a good idea on what they're thinking and how they're thinking about cataclysm and I feel like they're thinking about Cataclysm in the right ways. They're thinking about it in a way that how do we provide much more content so we don't get to a point like we, we have in Wrath where people are raid logging so quickly or complaining that there's nothing to do. Like this, you've, you'd have challenging PvE content in, a, in five mans to do in the form of the challenge modes. You could go and raid pretty much all day long if they really did release all raids as relevant content. It would just be mental amounts of content, which give give it give it to me now. And again, they mentioned about the fact of making 60 to 80 easier and less grinding to get to current content. One last one to leave you with, which is a massive one. And I mean massive. Talent tree rework, but without the changes that Kat are brought into them. So I ask this. You take from that, so reading it in your yeah, like native language, would that mean to you... You don't need to put 31 points in one tree yeah, before you go to the other. would be my take on it. Yeah, you will be... I think you will get smaller or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, that would be my takeaway from that. I don't need to go down to the last talent in, in my in my tree to pick up the other ones. And that would be like... Open up like really, really crazy stuff, right? Because oh, yeah. halfway through, there's like the, the big thing always, right? Yeah, because trying to translate from German to English perfectly... You know, there are going to be things that, that sometimes don't quite make sense, you know, in, in, in a sentence. So I wanted to get his opinion really on what do you think, you know, in your native language, reading it, how would you take that? And he takes it the same way as me, that actually the restriction would be lifted to go 31 points deep in a talent tree before you branch out to others. So you could do some crazy builds, you know, crazy, crazy builds by being able to be like hybrid going, you know, halfway in ret halfway in pro or whatever you know as a paladin i'm talking about there would just be so many options uh, i'm gonna leave it there i probably need to reflect on this a little bit and have a little think about 
what all of this means and maybe compile those thoughts into a nice new video at some point later on, maybe next week. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Hype for Kata. Let's go.